Hello and good morning and welcome to the desk of the 389 Project. Uh, you may or may not know who we are. Um, if you do, well, then you've been following us for a while and you know what we do. Uh, if you don't, uh, my name is Dave and I am kind of the creator of all of this stuff. And just a brief background on how all this began. Uh, originally, I wanted to build a 389, so uh, uh, I built models when I was a kid, and and uh, I enjoy doing it. Now that I'm a little bit older, as you can see, uh, <laughs> I decided I wanted to take it back up. That was three years ago, and uh, so I went out and found a Peterbilt model uh, that I wanted to build and uh, so but it wasn't quite what I wanted it was well it was it was this and this is about a 2008, 2000, yeah, excuse me, 2007, 2000, 2006, 2007 uh, version of a Peterbilt uh, tractor. It has a little bit of a slanted hood to it. It's a 378 model. Uh, in that time, there was also a 379 model or a correction version that uh, had a longer flatter hood and that's basically what I wanted to build except I wanted to build a newer one and so uh, I started looking on all of the you know Facebook pages and, and various different websites uh, for people who did aftermarket aftermarket parts and I simply couldn't find them. I mean, I found some hoods on Shapeways and and uh, some headlights on Shapeways and a few things like that, but that made everything else wrong. So you put you put uh, you put a hood on it and some headlights and um, but none of the rest of it's there. So I decided after looking at some of these aftermarket parts places that I'll just start making some parts, you know, uh, what the heck, you know, I mean, why not? I mean, it seems, didn't seem all that difficult. I talked to some great people like Tim Alburn, Alborn, uh, you know, uh, Jamie, uh, a lot of other people are in the molding and casting business. And I started, you know, trying to collect what was out there. Um, Tim at one point had built, um, a 389 and he'd built a dash and he'd built some door panels and he'd built, uh, some cool stuff, uh, for that time. And so I tried to gather it all up and get it here and just try to do some refinements to it to, um, to make them, uh, I guess the word I'm looking for is probably cleaner. Uh, the problem with molding and casting is that you can only mold and cast so many times before things start to, uh, take their toll. And so... And the parts that I ultimately got, um, clearly had been molded and casted many, many, many times by a variety of other people who I won't mention here. Um, which is, you know, all great businesses, all great people. Um, some are still in business, some are not. So, as I pro as I moved through this project, um, some of the parts were easier to make than others. And, uh, but I could not master the whole molding and casting thing. Uh, I, I talked to Tim the other day and he said, it's like a black art, 
you know, uh, it's like black magic, you know, some people you just got it, and you know how to do it. And other people, uh, you know, like Jamie, Jamie knows how to do it. I mean, he puts out some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff over at Molunium. Uh, Molunium. <laughs> and, uh, I've ordered a lot of parts from, from Jamie and, and every time they show up, they're absolutely beautiful. How that man does it, I have no clue. So after some time and I just couldn't get this process down, I couldn't get it right. Um, I got very frustrated. And so in that frustration, I was about ready to quit, stop doing everything. And, um, because at that point in my life, I believed that 3D printing, um, was kind of a bad thing, you know, excuse me, I'm gonna take a drink here. Um, uh, you know, there were lots of lines in it and you had to do all this post work to make them work. And if you got to do all this sanding and all of these different things to it, then you're going to lose all the details. And I, that's not what I wanted. I wanted those details. It was important that I got those details. And so, in fact, one of the hoods that I got uh, is right here. This is one of the older hoods that, uh, that I got. And I started to modify and start putting the details back on. I oh, can't see it in that camera. We're going to go over to this one. And we started putting some of the details back on it. And now this is molded and casted. And we started working on doing the interiors. And, but the problem was I just could not get these to duplicate properly. It just wouldn't work for me. And so again... Like I said, I got very, very, very frustrated. So I'm going to set that right there for right now. And ultimately, I had been involved in, in uh, some other 3D graphics work um, with Bryce and a few other 3D programs way, way, way back when. So I had a basic understanding of how these things work and so uh, I got into 3d scanning um, a lot of which you can do with your phone these days um, but I got into scanning and started scanning a few things uh, this hood being one of them and that became complicated as there's a lot of stuff you got to tear away from it to get it right and uh, all of that stuff from the scanning. So we just pretty much started doing it from the ground up. And so then we just went out and said the heck with it and bought a 3D printer. And we learned how to use a 3D printer. And we've gotten it to a point where we have decided that we are not going to sacrifice quality for time. We're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to, we're going to sacrifice time for quality. And that is where some of these parts come in. This is one of our hoods. We have recently run into a small snag with them. And I don't know if you can actually see some of those details in there, but we're trying to get them to you. We have the inner frame workings. etc. 
So we ultimately decided to make an entire package. And that's what we're here to show you today. This is the brand new 389 Project Italieri conversion kit for a 389. So we're going to go through, we're going to do a little box opening here. And unfortunately, there's not a lot in the box right now because it is just a conversion kit. There will be other parts coming eventually. And we're going to start with one of the hoods. Okay. I'm going to open it up here. Hope you don't mind, Jeff, but I'm using yours. Uh, so we're going to open it up. And here you go. This is the hood that uh, is in Jeff's kit in Jeff's kit. Just like the one I just showed you. Except this one's all nice and cured. And pretty much ready to go. However, we ran across a small problem the other day. And if you're following the 389 project on Facebook. Uh, you will know that we ran across this little issue. The issue was that these grills uh, were not lining up well. When I started to do our mock-up over there, I noticed the problem, and they weren't lining up really, really well. So... We had to do a little bit of investigating and figure out what the problem was. And we have, we have kind of narrowed the problem down and Jeff will be getting a new grill. We're going to close this up. This is one of the new grills. It has been slightly redesigned in order to work better with the hoods and I will show you that right now so I'm just going to set that bad dude on there oh you know what I forgot to do hey Jeff you're going to get a little uh, little heads up here uh, okay one of the things you always want to do with 3D parts is there are support systems that hold all this stuff together when in the printing process so you want to give it a little bit of a sand just a little bit see you're gonna be ahead of the game there Jeff I'm gonna take care of yours right now okay just a little bit of a sand there okay a little to get those edges so they're nice and clean Huh? Not much. And this is an important thing that I'm showing you right now because most 3D printed parts have a lot of lines in them and they take a fair amount of primer and a lot of sanding. To get to what you want. That is something we are trying very desperately to avoid here at the 389 project. We want to make sure that you that you, there is as little post work necessary as possible. So, that's the wrong one. There we go. There's the one we just did. So, we're going to throw that back on there like that. And if you look, she lines up real nice. There you go. Oh crap! Sorry, Jeff. I just broke your uh, just broke your grill. I'll put another one in. You're gonna have to sand it though. 
So she lines up much, much, much nicer now. There's the top view. Now bear in mind, I'm just holding it on there. It's not glued in place, but Here we go. <laughs> Sorry, fender was pulling out just a little bit there. So, anyway, she lines up pretty good. That's with the that's with the new grills. Jeff, here goes your old and your old old grill. They're going into the garbage. Here's another new one, and we'll just do a quick sand on it too, just so you get what I promised you would. Gonna do a real quick little sand here. Real quick. Nothing major. You do want to be careful with these things though. Once they go through the curing process, they're they can be very brittle. So you do not want to manhandle these things too much. Okay, or they will break. And then you'll be having the glue pieces back together again. And so here we'll try this one more time. There we go. There's number two. Another beautiful fit. There we go. Number two. Another beautiful fit. <laughs> Get my hands to work here. Uh, yeah, that could use just a little bit more. But anyway, there you go. So you got just a tad bit more sanding to do on yours there jeff let me uh get back to this i'm gonna put these in here put this watching me package up your brand new grill here there you go jeff and we're gonna throw that back in the box we're gonna take the hood we're gonna put it back oh by the way the hood comes with Two hinges, uh, one for either side, and those hinges are designed to work with the Italieri, uh, the existing Italieri front end uh, hinge holes. They are made to work with it, as you can see from our mock up over here, which is an Italieri. Excuse me, I'm looking down a lot here, folks, but I'm just trying to pay attention to what I'm doing. So I don't break any more of Jeff's parts, you know? So, we're gonna throw that back in there like so, real quick. I'm gonna close this box back up so you can see over the top of it. But as you can see here, this is our mock-up. That is an Italieri cab, that is an Italieri frame. Um, seems like a stamp. Stand by a minute. We uh, got to change. I got to change the camera. You know what? Heck with it. I'm not going to use that camera. So, this is an Italieri. Uh, this is an Italieri uh, cab, Italieri frame, a 389 hood, and as you can see, it is designed to work perfectly fine with the existing Italieri stuff. Okay. A few other things that we'll show you. All right. So, Jeff, what did Jeff order here? Let's take a look and see what Jeff ordered. Uh, all right. We're going to take a look at Jeff's dashboard here all right jeff ordered the full gauge dash system and this is your 389 dashboard and it is set up so you do not have to make any modifications whatsoever to the cab 
uh, it will just slide in place uh, just as the old one did. There is a, or is the factory one does. There's a new steering wheel for it. This is actually in case you actually do want to go automatic with yours, which many, I know many of you won't, or you just want to use the cool, you know, the cool updated uh, steering wheel. Um, but in case you don't, there is also this small pedestal or this small steering column, and you can take your standard steering wheel from the kit and just glue that bad dude right on there. All right. I'm going to repackage that. Another thing that is uh, commonly seen on the 389. I'm going to close the box again. Are these little curved behind hood wings. Okay, that is what I'm going to show you now. Inside this package, you get four different things. Actually, you get five different things because one of these is going in there too. Okay, you get a driver's side behind hood wing. You get a passenger side full size behind hood wing. Okay, that is in case you do in case you want to bypass the DPF system. And put a standard battery box on on that side which you know for many deleted 389s and things of that nature is pretty common out there so but if you are using the dpf box and the dpf filter you will need this smaller narrow one because it takes up more room on the passenger side Another thing that another feature that the 389 kits are going to have is the 378 and the 388 and 389. The cap is lower by about two inches. Okay, so if you use the factory stuff, um, that cap is going to sit up, and your hood will have just a little bit of a slant to it. Okay, well, we want to correct that because we want you to have as close to a, a true 389 as you can. So we have included a front cab mount. And this will go approximately here on your Italiari frame. And if you are watching this Italiari build, you will... You will uh, You'll see what I'm doing. Anyway, that will go approximately there. And then we have also created... This is your rear cab support from, your, from the Italiari kit. Okay? This is the cab support that we have created. Which, as you can see, is a pass-through cross member like all the rest of the 389 cross members are but and there will be a cross member kit uh coming out eventually but this reduces the height by about two millimeters give or take and allows you to uh, flatten your hood out a little bit it will lower the cab just a tad bit so we're going to put those in back in the package and we'll open her back up again. Toss her up in the corner. All right. Now, let's move to some interior stuff. With every single 389 Project Kit, you are going to get four pieces for your interior. Okay. Okay. So here we have a standard Italiari rooftop. 
okay? This is the top of the cab. And there is a factory insert that goes in here for a headliner uh, for this. You're going to toss it. And this headliner is going to take its place, just as so. Oops, looky there. And that fourth piece is just hiding right there in the little cubby hole. All right, so it's going to fit right in there just like so. And replace your old one. Has a few details to it, a few new details to it, some side stuff, some little speakers up there, so your rear, uh, your rear uh, cab light, your uh, over the seat cab lights, side cab lights. Uh, you'll notice we put a couple of uh, cubbies in it. I don't know if you guys can see that stuff. Yeah, we put a couple of cubbies in it. So there's your side, your side lights. Uh, your over the seat lights. Uh, and there is a little CB radio holder right there. And guess what? Because we're just such super nice people over here at the 389 Project. We even included a little Cobra 29 CB radio. <laughs> uh, excuse me. And so, now we're also going to... We have some door panels and those door panels have the proper cubby they have the proper cubby there so you can stuff little magazines in there if you like and uh, your door handles and most all the features are nice and raised on them so they shouldn't be too difficult to paint to be your passenger side one. Now this one is important because when you build your kit, you are also going to use this window, this peep window. Okay, and you're going to use that peep window because the peep window on the standard um, 378 cab is much more round. This has more square features to it. You are going to basically use this on the inside of the door. You're going to set it in place and you're going to trace out your peephole so that you can cut it out in the door. And you can use that. Also, you can use this door panel as a guide to the proper angle in which you're going to cut the, uh, cut the windows out as well. Because you're going to take out the wind wing bar and you're going to profile the window down with a with a slight angle to it uh, in order to create a proper 389 from that 378 cap. So we're going to take that stuff out of there, put it back in the package. Put the package back in Jeff's kit. And we'll move on to the next item. Get this out of the way. Put that back up in the kit. Throw the sandpaper out of here for a minute. The next thing coming is a full set of mirrors. All right, so what do we have? There's a vast difference between the mirror system on the 378, 379, and the 389. It was completely changed. And uh, it has two types of mirror systems on it. Um, one of those mirror systems is your standard mirror system like you see on most trucks um, with your big fish eye underneath it. Um, you can use those they they're in your kit and you can add those to this if you would like and that would be functional and it would be accurate and then there is also your electric mirrors um, and that's what I'm supplying you 
So here's your, these are your mirror stands or mirror brackets, uh, one for either side of the truck. Okay, then you get a, and then you have a current, I mean, ugh, a little hard to grab there. Oh. There's a straight bar. It goes from the cab to the mirror bracket where it hooks up. Then you have a rounded bucket, mirror bucket. Okay. And this is on the electric mirror systems. And what I'm going to do with this, and hopefully I don't break these, Jeff. I'm going to slide that little bad dude in there like that. I'm going to grab it with this. With these and hope I can hold it all together again to show it. And there you go. And there is your electric mirror system. I keep looking over to the side here, guys, because uh, that's where I'm getting the preview for this, uh, for this particular camera. So, and you have a complete set of mirrors. And these are things, folks, that are just not available out there. And the whole goal of the 389 project was to bring all of these parts into one place where they could be consolidated, put together, and placed into a kit that you can comfortably and adequately build a 389 front. All right, now we're going to move on to... Because I don't exactly always know what you guys want to build, so sometimes I'll just go a little bit over the top and throw in something. There are two sizes of def tanks there's a narrow one there's a there's a wider one this is your wider one okay again very detailed the only problem with these tanks is i have not been able to get rid of these lines which means that if you're going to use the tank open meaning without the Peterbilt cover on it, um, then you're going to have to do a little bit of sanding here, which will probably you'll probably end up losing these straps, so you'll probably end up having to repair that and or replace that in some way, shape, or form if you're going to use these as the black plastic tanks only. Peterbilt has a chrome and or stainless steel, actually, uh, cover that is actually part of the strapping system that holds it together and it covers over the entire front portion of the def tank this would be very easy to make um it's something you can make out of an aluminum can if you wanted to really get that aluminum look you could make it out of the inside of an aluminum can or uh you know a, a very thin you know half millimeter um piece of styrene very simple it just simply is a piece that's kind of angled up here at the top goes here to here and has a hole in the middle of it it's it should be really really simple for almost anyone to make uh you can look at them online anywhere on virtually any peterbilt that you see out there very rarely will you see one unless it is very basic um, you know, a very basic company truck that is just the black tank with these straps on it. It's very rare, it's, you know, unless, but my guess is if you're going this, this far to build a 389, you're probably going to build it pretty custom. So you'll want that chrome cover so you can do whatever you want. You can sand it or not sand it and just put the chrome cover on it and you're good to go. So... Okay, 
So we are gonna start that over again. If you are building a 389, a proper 389, uh, as they're built from the factory uh, in certain states, uh, <laughs> then you will be building one that has a DPF and a DPF box, diesel, uh, diesel particulate filter. And so we have supplied you a diesel particulate filter. As you can see, we have not done a super lot of detail to this and there's a reason for it because it is tucked up inside of this box, which we have put a bunch of detail into, uh, both in the steps. Um, we have your nuts and bolt heads there everything pretty much as it's supposed to be um at some point in time down the road we may do a version that has some diamond plate on it uh but we elected to stay clean with it because i figure most of the guys out there who are building the custom trucks out there are going with more clean looks without a lot of a lot of diamond plate on it uh so we have elected to stay away from diamond plating it for right now. Uh, but we may, we may diamond plate it at some point in time. But basically, uh, this diesel particulate filter just simply goes in the wide end first. And narrow in like so. And just glues right in place. And there you go. And all you have to do is figure out how to run your uh, exhaust over to this side and out that side. And at some point down the road, we may have that solved for you too, as well. Uh, as, I, as I start building my own over here, uh, I will have to resolve some of those issues myself. And that being said, that will result in, guess what? new parts <laughs> so last but not least in your kit is i have to be really careful with these and please guys when you take these out of these packages be very careful because these cured parts will break so just be really, really careful. If you have to, just cut the package open and, uh, and take it out. So here you go. You have a modern style, a late model uh, battery box, which will go on to the, and again, it has all your little uh, bolt heads on it and all the proper brackets and your grading, uh, proper brackets uh, for the rear, and then on top, on top of that, you'll see these little end caps. They go on these tanks. Um, you have your primary air, primary air, which mounts approximately there, and then your secondary air tank mounts to the rear of that. And looks like the caps are gone, obviously. You'll want to just do a, a tad little bit of sanding there. So the caps go on nice and clean, like so. And just glue them bad dudes on there. And there you go, a secondary air tank. Um... When we did this, these originally, they had they had the metal straps, but for some reason they just wouldn't print well, and so uh, we've left them. We've kind of left them off. Uh, the guides are there; that the forward parts of them are there, uh, but it's nothing a tiny uh, you know a tiny piece of wire wouldn't a very tiny piece of you know the inside of a piece of wire uh, wouldn't. 
you know, the copper piece on the inside wouldn't uh, take care of. Just fine. And so there you have it. That is the contents of 389 Projects, Italiari 378 389 Conversion Kit. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching this. And I hope you'll follow us on this build as we have something that we're also going to shoot today coming off the printer in just a few minutes. Everybody have a beautiful day. Happy modeling and enjoy. We love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.